What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a really interesting 8-inch 2-in-1 laptop slash tablet. I do want to mention that I'm not exactly sure what the name of this thing is going to be. This was kind of sent over unannounced, but as soon as I unboxed it, I knew I had to boot it up because it definitely looked really interesting. I've been messing around with it for the last couple of days and I'm pretty impressed by what this thing does. Now as you can see, we've got a very small form factor here. And basically, we've got a Windows-powered 2-in-1 with an 8-inch 1200p display. It's got 12 gigabytes of RAM, and I'm not sure if they're going to be offering one with more. Plus, it's got a 2230 M.2 SSD. This came pre-installed with a 512 gigabyte drive. We've got quite a bit to go over and test in this video, but before we get started, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. I've been using this site for a long time. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft, but the main thing I usually pick up over here are Windows 10 Pro OEM keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off, bringing the price down to $17 for that key. And keep in mind, this will also work with Microsoft Office products. We'll use code ETA. As you can see, brought it down to that $17 price mark. Personally, I use PayPal just to have that security. So we'll go ahead and check out. They're going to email that code to you. And now we can use that code to activate Windows 10 Pro. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. They'll email your code once your payment is processed. And that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. Now, this isn't the most powerful mini laptop on the market, but I've been able to get a lot done with it, and I'm pretty impressed with the uh, lower end gaming performance and especially emulation performance this thing puts out. And again, as you can see, I mean, we've got a very small form factor here. It's actively cooled. It's constructed of aluminum all the way around, and the weight on this is coming in at around 680 grams. The keyboard here is way better than I ever thought it would be, but there is one thing here that I'm not too keen on, and we'll take a look at that in just a bit. A lot of travel on these keys, and as you can see, it is a backlit keyboard. Unfortunately, there's only one brightness level, single zone, white LED, but it can get you by in the dark. We also have that 1200p IPS touch display with up to 500 nits of brightness. And when it comes to I.O., over here on the left-hand side, we've got USB Type-C. This does support data and charging the unit up, but it doesn't support display out. That's where that mini HDMI port comes into play. We've also got a full-size USB 3 port, and over on the right-hand side, 3.5 millimeter audio jack, another full-size USB 3 port, and a micro SD card slot. Like I mentioned, I'm not exactly sure if they're going to be offering one with more RAM, but given what we've got here, 12 gigs of RAM, and at least with the one they sent me, 512 gigabytes of storage with that upgradable 2230 M.2 SSD, I'd see a lot of people could definitely make use of something like this. And when it comes to the overall specs, for the CPU, this is actually powered by the Intel N100. So it's not a super powerful chip. Four cores, four threads, up to 3.4 gigahertz. We've got those built-in Intel UHD graphics up to 750 megahertz. 12 gigabytes of LP DDR5 at 4800 megahertz. 2230 M.2 slot, 8 inch, 1200p IPS display. Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, 26 watt hour battery. And this is running Windows 11. I personally enjoy the form factor and build quality is actually really awesome. All aluminum, keyboard has some nice travel. It actually works out really well for typing up long documents, but obviously, I mean, we've got a compact keyboard here. Touch screen is really responsive here. And I was surprised to see that it is 1920 by 1200. So we've got that 16 by 10 aspect ratio here. And using the touch screen is how I've really been navigating this unit because we don't have a real trackpad, but there is this optical sensor down here. Unfortunately, in my experience, it doesn't work as well as I was hoping it would. And I really do think it comes down to the placement because when you're trying to navigate with that optical sensor, the separated space bar at the bottom kind of gets in your way. So if you're trying to track all the way across the screen, it's going to kind of block you with those keys there. If it was raised up just a bit, I think it would work a lot better. But the touch screen is here and that's exactly how I've been navigating the whole unit. It's actually a pretty snappy little system here. Browsing the web, email checking, document editing. You could definitely get all that done with the N100 from Intel. Again, four cores, four threads, up to 3.4 gigahertz. It's not going to win any performance awards by any means, 
but it's a low power chip and in my testing so far, I've only seen this thing pull up to 12.5 watts from that CPU. And I've been using this quite a bit for web browsing and even media playback. Believe it or not, I mean, even though we're working with a smaller 8-inch display coming in at 1200p, it is pretty sharp here. So watching YouTube videos on this thing does work out really well. We'll head over there now and just check out a little bit of a demo. The laptop does have dual stereo speakers. They're not downward firing. They're actually left and right firing on the side of the unit itself, but you can hear it pretty decent. I'm actually glad they didn't put them on the bottom. I've seen that with a lot of these lower end laptops. And when it comes to 1080p playback from YouTube, Netflix, HBO, you're going to be good to go with this unit. The N100 at a higher wattage connected to a larger monitor can actually do 4K video playback pretty decently. But since we're working with that 1200p display, I think 1080 is going to be more than enough for this thing. Now, I wanted to check out a little bit of PC gaming, and this chip here is definitely not made for gaming. We've got that UHD iGPU with 24 execution units, and it only goes up to 750 megahertz. But for some lower end indie games and even older PC games, this can work pretty decently. Here's Hades 2, we're at low settings 1200p. You can see we're running this over 60 FPS and usually with a little chip like this, I'll go ahead and lock V-Sync on. But with these two games that we're showing off first up, I'm just gonna turn it off just to show you how high we can take it. Next up, we've got Dirt 3, an older one, but like I mentioned, I mean, this is gonna work great with older games. 1200p low settings, still a lot of fun to play this one. And by the way, I'm using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth here. Now don't expect this N100 to run Cyberpunk 2077 even at the lowest settings over 60 FPS. I think we're going to get around 24 FPS. I didn't even test it with this because I know how low end this is. If you want to go with those harder to run games, you could do streaming, cloud gaming. But the next one I wanted to test was one of my favorite games. We've got OG Skyrim. With this, I did have to drop the resolution down a bit, and that's kind of how it is with the N100. But as you can see, it will run Skyrim at 60. PC gaming aside, indie games, older stuff, it'll work pretty decently. But don't go into something like this expecting newer AAA games to run at full speed. It's just not going to happen on that lower end N100. But I'll tell you, when it comes to emulation, the Intel N100 can really hold its own. PSP, GameCube, Wii, and even some PS2 games are fully playable on the N100. So let's go ahead and check that out. First up, PSP using PPSSPP, 3x resolution with Ghost of Sparta, a harder one to emulate here, running perfectly fine. So when it comes to the easier to emulate PSP games, you can take that resolution up and basically anything underneath this. You want to do Dreamcast at 1200p or 1080, really depends on how you want to set up the screen. It'll do it using the ReDream emulator. And of course, underneath that, you've got GBA, PC Engine, MAME. There's a lot of different systems that are going to run at full speed on this little laptop. But one of the most impressive things, at least to me, through all of my testing with the N100 chipset is GameCube and Wii emulation using the Dolphin emulator. Here's Automotalista. Right now we are at the native resolution and you can see that we're only pulling up to around 6 watts in total and most of the time we're well under that. Now there are a few GameCube games using the Dolphin emulator that just don't perform well on the N100. Well, I'd say, you know, some spots inside of games like F-Zero GX. One of those harder to emulate tracks like Fire Field kind of really falls on its face with the N100 even at native resolution. But there's still a ton of games that are going to be fully playable on this thing. But this thing can also handle PS2 emulation. Just like GameCube, there are going to be some games that are going to struggle with the N100, but there's a ton of different PlayStation 2 games that are going to run just fine on this system. So yeah, definitely not the most powerful mini laptop on the market, but it is very portable. And one thing I'd love to see in the future from this company is an AMD revision. Something with an AMD Mendocino chip, something lower in would be great here. Keep battery life up, heat down, and you could still see some pretty decent performance when it comes to gaming and emulation on a smaller screen like this. 
but right now, at the time I'm making this video, the only version I'm seeing is the Intel N100. I will ask them if they're planning an AMD version, but what we've got here does work out pretty decently. I was surprised by the form factor, glad they went with the 1200p 8 inch display. I've seen several smaller laptops online in this form factor, around 7 to 8 inches, using 720p 16 by 9 aspect ratio displays, but with the 16 by 10 1200, it really does make a difference. You could fold this thing over, use it like a tablet, and it's got more I.O. than most of these usually do. Two full-size USBs, we've got USB-C, micro SD card, and a 3.5mm audio jack. But that's gonna wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see running on this device, just let me know in the comments below, and I will leave some links down below so you can learn a little more. I personally would love to install Linux on this and see exactly what we could do with it. Something like Manjaro I think would work out pretty well on this N100. But if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. Like always... Thanks for watching.